the 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 segment that we all usually wait for, MJF and the big whipping of Wardlow. These are the things he has to go through, right? He's got to be whipped ten times with the leather strap. He's got to wrestle Sean Spears in a cage with MJF as referee. He can't touch MJF before the match at the pay per view, or elsewise. Not only is the match off. And he doesn't get his revenge on MJF, but also he can never sign a contract with AEW. And again, just from the start, it's like a whole, you can now, you can tell the difference in, it seems to me, the sound of the people. Now, the New York crowd obviously is an aberration for MJF. And maybe even the, the more metropolitan crowds or cosmopolitan crowds or the bigger cities of the, the Northeast or the Midwest, Chicago, they might kind of, they cheer MJF and sometimes they boo him, but they have fun booing him. But over the past couple of weeks, and especially here in Texas, are you hearing that more people are booing MJF and it's starting to sound like they more mean it? He's getting some fucking reaction. I, ju I just, I hear a different tone from the people when he's around doing that like when he when he tries to say the words houston texas and can't get it out because he's retching and about to vomit they don't like that anyway um and the people started chanting shut the fuck up while he was trying to lay down the premise and everything so regardless of whether they're working with him regardless of whether they're really starting he's really starting to get under their skin he's getting a more heelish reaction than anybody else on the program because he's the only one that you can honestly sit down and say, that's a fucking heel. And he might kind of actually think like he talks. The rest of them are all playing a part. But that guy, he could be a fucking asshole. I can see that. I think that's the attribute that MJF has that that nobody else can pull off is people are not really sure. He might be a talented guy and also an asshole, but he's doing a great job. And Wardlow's over. Did you hear the fans chanting? And, and obviously that wasn't a long walk with security by happenstance. They wanted the Goldberg reaction, but the people are chanting Wardlow, Wardlow like Goldberg. But thankfully he's 30 years younger. That's what Tony Khan wants. Um, and yeah, yeah <laughs> I can't say anything about that. Those pesky NDAs. As soon as Wardlow gets in the ring, MJF spits right in his face. What a fucking asshole. I liked, this is the first time that there's ever been a whipping angle done where the guy being whipped didn't sell any of them and it added to it. Because normally you still got to sell, right? No matter how big and bad you are to get the deal over. This heel is making you suffer. This heel is making you, causing you pain. It's, 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 it's demeaning. But in this case, with all the shit that MJF has done for it to backfire and for Ward, and I tell you, MJF knows how to whip with the belt and it made a nice noise, but still that ain't comfortable. And Wardlow, with his back turned, couldn't see it coming, so he was pretty well just having to eat those and not even blink. So he didn't sell the first one. He didn't sell the second one. And then MJF gets fucking pissed and just flips out and starts windmilling him. Three, four, five, six, seven, and Spears grabs him like, no, 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 you're wasting them all. Slow down here. So Spears goes number eight, and he doesn't sell it. And then Spears does number nine, and that's he registers. He bends over and he stands back up, but that one got him. And then finally, MJF is going to go for number 10. And of course, Wardlow's still handcuffed, but still after number 10, generally that's when the babyface then makes a desperate lunge for the heel, right? So when MJF goes for number 10 while he's behind him, he draws the belt back and then he just hauls off and football kicks Wardlow in the crotch from behind. Down he goes, a ball shot, and boom, and they get on him. And they start whipping him and kicking him. And MJF puts the diamond ring on and Spears holds him and he nails him with the diamond ring. And then Spears gives him a fucking 
modified Death Valley driver, as the kids say, and MJF counted to three because he's going to be the referee next week. For AEW, this was heat, and it was very good because everybody was in a place they needed to be and presented the way they need to be presented. And now the people know that Wardlow wants to get even next week and he's going to dismantle Sean Spears and it ain't going to be that easy for MJF to fucking, you know, make the, uh, the goddamn count when it's a match and he's not handcuffed and all that. It, it left everybody with the right impression is what I'm saying. What'd you think? I thought it was really good. Obviously the fact that they did it in an unexpected way was a nice, nice change. You don't know where it's going to go. You don't know what's going to happen. When he finally sold, when Spears hit him, it almost like it went across and got him in the neck. That was good right at the end. That's the first time that I whipped wrestling too in Louisiana because I'd never whipped anybody before. Mine wrapped around and got him in the side of the neck. And he looked back and he said, if you get me with another one of those, I'm coming after you. But yeah, they can't go awry. They've done a great job of making people really excited to see this match. Well, and also Wardlow, they got heat on Wardlow without burying him for being a big, strong, badass giant, if you will, because anybody could have gone down under those circumstances. And it just, it that's that's the thing. If you've got a big, kick-ass baby face, you can't have him sell just any old shit. And you can't have him just overpowered and down and have the shit kicked out of him unless it's in some way that the people can rationalize that could have happened, that those no good son of a bitches. That's the only way they could have got him. I hope so, they don't I hope they don't fuck up Wardlow. They got someone there who could be the biggest star in the company. Well now, wait a minute now. Old Punk and MJF might have an issue with that because they're going to be the biggest star in the company. Punk is the biggest star in the company. <laughs> MJF's MJF one of them, and MJF could certainly be as long as he wants to stay there. But <laughs> Wardlow, as far as being a big babyface star, he could be a yeah. bigger star than everyone they have. Well, just remember that, Tony, in case that things don't work out in 2024. You got Wardlow in your back pocket. His contract comes up, too. Uh-oh. You know, Vince, you know, if Vince sees him, that's the one guy in AEW he's going to want, other than Billy Gunn. That's the one guy in AEW <laughs> he's going to want. I know they've already seen him, I'm sure. I'm sure they've already seen him. 